Now before revealing the specifics of earning $13.43 a day with stock market investing, I'd like to introduce you to Greg, who decided to celebrate New Year's Eve by vaping inside the bus I was taking home. And a bit of advice everyone, don't be like Greg in 2022. And with that PSA out the way, let's start off 2022 the right way by first doing a deep dive portfolio update for the month of December and seeing how it's a brand new year and I'm all about transparency. Stay tuned because after the December update, I'll give a one year performance recap of my stock portfolio. And let's just say even I was surprised at some of the numbers. So let's not waste any time. My portfolio ended last month and capped off 2021 with a combined balance of $47,503.75 across my six M1 Finance accounts. And I've been using M1 Finance since 2018 and it's honestly the best brokerage for my style of investing. But if you'd like to give it a whirl and also get $50 totally free in the process, click my referral link in the description. And going back, unlike November when my portfolio finished in the red, December was a green month finishing up $1,681.49, a net change of 3.67%, but not all of that was stock gains because I did deposit $1,325 last month, bringing my total deposit of my portfolio to $35,380. But the rest, the $356.49, it was from stock gains, upping my portfolio's total unrealized gains to $12,123.75. And just think about that for a second. I'm now $12,000 richer because I decided to save and invest my money. I could have easily used that money to buy myself a car, or go on a vacation, or buy some other random internet stuff. But by having some self-discipline and deciding to put my money to work for me, I'll snowball my current portfolio into hopefully millions of dollars. Another thing that did increase is my dividend payout with December, seeing the most dividends ever received with $77.28. Almost all of it from the 11 Vanguard sector ETFs I'm invested in. Next, I just have $9.67 of uninvested cash just sitting around. And unlike at the start of the year, this column will remain low because I have dollar cost average every Friday, so whatever money I deposit throughout the week will just be invested right away. But with all these numbers, I can calculate my portfolio's return as of December, which is 34.28% in lifetime return, further broken down to an annualized return of 10.28%. And the best part, even with that average return, if I just let my current investment grow without any further deposit, my portfolio balance minus uninvested cash will compound into $828,743.31 by the time I hit 60 years old. But forget my portfolio gain, my dividends, and future compounded growth. Honestly, the most impressive number is this one, that I still have over 1,000 subscribers. The channel did gain 25 new subscribers, so welcome everyone. And I hope you stick around because I'll be doing these monthly updates so you can see whether my stock picks earn me millions or I crash and burn like these poor old Nikola shareholders. And no YouTube income yet in December, but I'm getting closer to monetization, only requiring 919 public watch hours before I can start earning that sweet, sweet ad money from those annoying Amazon dropshipping ads. So that's all of December's numbers and now that we have that, let's rewind the clock one year because it's a really amazing what could happen in 365 days. And here's all the number from last year. And because I update this spreadsheet on the last day of every month, I started off January 1st of 2021 with a portfolio balance of $28,366.41, meaning I increased my portfolio balance by $19,137.34 or by 67.46%. Of course, my deposit for 2021 also increased massively as I was able to put in $14,235 and I still have $3,150 left to fully max out my 2021 Roth IRA contributions, but I have until April to take care of that, so I'll focus on that first and max out my 2022 contributions. But more impressive, well, impressive to me at least, is my portfolio gain throughout 2021 that went up by $4,902.34, a percentage increase of 67.89%. Side note, I've recently changed how I'm investing in across my six M1 finance accounts, and I'll be revealing my picks in a future video. So make sure to subscribe to see that video when it drops. But one thing that hasn't changed is my indifference for dividends, since the majority of my stock picks are more growth based, but I still received $283.85 in dividends last year. 
And to wrap things up, October 2021 saw the highest lifetime portfolio return with 41.04%. April 2021 saw my highest annualized return at 15%. And yeah, all these numbers fall short when compared to the S&P 500's return of 65.97% since I started my portfolio back in 2018, but this comparison is skewed because I consistently buy stocks on a weekly basis, naturally bringing up my cost basis and lowering my overall return. But let's stay hopeful and we'll see if I'm able to finally beat the S&P 500 by the end of this year. At the start of 2021, the channel just had 427 subscribers, but it finished off strong, adding 649 new subscribers, a growth of 152%. And even though only a third of you watching ever make it to this point, if you're still here, comment below if you're a 2021 subscriber, or let me know what year you decided to subscribe, or whether you're just here passing by. And $90 is all I've made in 2021 thanks to three of you lovely peeps using my M1 Finance link below. And here's to hoping I'll become eligible to join the YouTube Partner Program very, very soon. But when I do and I start getting that money, you'll definitely get all the juicy details in my future update videos. Once again, like, comment, and subscribe if you want. But that's enough talking for one day, so I'll catch y'all next time with more financial shenanigans.